Law students often assume that there were no real rules of evidence before the 1975 adoption of the Federal Rules of Evidence. But that's wrong. The Federal Rules organized and clarified a large body of earlier law. Two decades before the rules were adopted, the court in Nuttall v. Reading Company examined the hearsay rule and the exception we now call the present sense impression. Clarence Nuttall, a railroad engineerman for the Reading Company, was scheduled to work on a cold, wet January morning. But Clarence was sick, so he called George Marquette, the company's yard operations manager. Nuttall's wife, Florence, heard her husband's side of the conversation. She heard Clarence tell Marquette he was very sick and couldn't come to work. Clarence then asked why Marquette was forcing him to come to work, despite being ill. Florence heard Clarence say that he would have to go in. After the conversation, Clarence told Florence that he had to go to work. John O'Hara, the fireman on the same train as Clarence, saw that Clarence was sick. Clarence told O'Hara that he didn't feel good, that the yard office had told him no substitutes were available, and that Clarence wasn't allowed to take the day off. James Snyder, the conductor on the same train, also saw that Clarence looked ill. Clarence told Snyder that he felt bad and had tried to get relieved, but he'd been unsuccessful. Clarence's condition deteriorated, and he eventually died. Florence Nuttall, as executrix of her husband's estate, sued the reading company. If the company's management knew that an employee was sick, but nevertheless forced him to work in unsafe conditions anyway, the company would have been liable under the Federal Employers' Liability Act. George Marquette also died prior to trial. The first trial resulted in a verdict for Florence, but the district court ordered a new trial. The court then excluded three items of evidence as inadmissible hearsay, which were O'Hara's testimony, Snyder's testimony, and Florence's testimony about Nuttall's telephone conversation with Marquette. The district court then granted Reading Company a directed verdict. Florence appealed to the Third Circuit. 